Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm attorney Stephen Fudos of the United Law Center, and this is another episode of the Ask Steve for Free podcast uh, on our website. Check all of them out because they're very informative. This one has to do with the modification process and just why you're not receiving a modification in a timely manner or receiving one at all. Many of my clients come into me and they ask me, why does it take three weeks to get a refinance and yet it could take up to three years to get a modification. And I'm gonna to try to explain to you now on a very basic, basic level. Uh, I've done about a, a third of the schematic that I have on my website. Here's the entire thing that you can actually see uh, if you go on the website. But for the time being, uh, this is just for the purposes of showing how the banks are making money by not modifying your note, okay? So we'll start out with the basics. First, here is the tra your basic transaction, okay? You have your bank, they give you a mortgage. That mortgage consists of a deed of trust and a promissory note. And as you remember, as we've been talking for so many months, what the banks were doing between 2003 and 2008 were bundling these notes in packages of anywhere between 1,000 and 10,000, and they would assign them over to what's called a mortgage-backed security trust. It's also referred to as a REMIC, a real estate mortgage investment conduit. Uh, it's also referred to pass-through securities. There's lots of different names for them, but a mortgage-backed security trust is the most common. And so as they would assign these trusts, uh, these promissory notes to the trust, this trust would assume as many promissory notes as they could within 90 days, uh, and then they would send out a prospectus stating that this trust has so many notes, 5,031 notes in it, and it's worth $5 billion, and this is how much the shares are, and they'd send it out, the prospectus, their, to their potential buyers. If the value of the promissory notes went up, then the shareholders would make money. If the value of the promissory notes went down, then they would lose money. That's a very basic understanding of this, because this is a complicated area right here, but that, for, the, for this purpose, that's all you need to know. Okay, well, once they do that, keep in mind, the bank has just sold its interest in your promissory note and deed of trust to this entity. They no longer own it. They're no longer really acting as a bank. What they do preserve, though, when they transfer this are the servicing rights, okay? And those are the rights that are given to the bank and to a variety of different banks. You often see that uh, when you receive a letter saying that your bank uh, the new servicer for your note is such and such bank. And what that means is this bank is receiving, as a servicer, a certain amount of money each time you send your payment off to the bank. So for example, let's say you have Bank of America and your mortgage is $1,500. The bank will take, hypothetically, say $100 for their servicing fee and the rest goes to the REMIC. Okay? Now, there's an agreement between the bank or servicer and this mortgage-backed security trust. That agreement is known as a pooling and servicing agreement. And that spells out the terms of this servicing contract that they have with the mortgage-backed security trust. The specific provision that you need to know about is this, that if one of these notes goes into default, then the bank or servicer is then entitled to receive up to two times their servicing fee. So instead of making $100 a month, now they're making $200 a month. Okay, again, pursuant to the pooling and servicing agreement, if your note goes into default, or any notes, usually vast majority of them, if they go into default, then the servicer of that note is entitled to receive up to two times their servicing fee. So, think, what do the banks tell you when you first apply for a modification, in most cases? They tell you in order to get a modification, you have to be behind, which means you have to be in default. And why are they telling you that? So they can collect their two times their servicing fee. And the reason they get two times their servicing fee is because they're dealing with a defaulted note. So technically, it's a little more difficult to deal with that note, but in truth, it's not. Well, if you multiply 
that number by 60 million notes that they're servicing, that's an incredible amount of cash flow that they're making each and every month. So how do they stretch that cash flow? How do they continue that money to come in? They drag out the modification process as long as they possibly can. That's why you hear from them, we never received your documents. We never received your signature on this document. Uh, we lost your papers. We never received your fax. Um, there's a new program we have out. Uh, we need your taxes again. And on and on and on and on and on. And each and every one of you out there that has gone through a modification know exactly what I'm talking about. And as, as I said, it could take up to two years for this to happen. And the reason is they're making two times their servicing fee. Why in the world would they ever want to modify your note? It would kill this cash cow. So let's assume that you didn't go into default and you were the one that said, you know what, I'm not going to go into default. I'm still going to try to get the modification. The bank will say, fine. Then what we'll do is, homeowner, we'll put you into what's called a trial plan payment. Okay? And many of you out there know exactly what I'm talking about. They'll tell you that just pay this payment for three months. And at the end of the three months, we'll give you a modification. Now, Remember, what you're paying is less than your mortgage. So the person that's getting it is thinking, great, this is exactly what I wanted. Finally, the bank is listening to me. They're finally going to give me this modification, and it's less than my mortgage. Oh, this is a dream come true. So you go ahead and do it. Well, what happens when you pay less than your mortgage for three months? You go into default because you're paying less than your mortgage for three months. So now you're in default, which triggers the two times provision, and now they're on the gravy train again. So without you even knowing it, they've duped you into defaulting. And remember, this three months usually turns into six months. Six months turns into 12 months. I have a client that paid 27 months of trial plan payments and then was denied a modification. By the way, the money that you pay for these trial plan payments, the $1,000 a month or whatever it is, do you think it goes to your mortgage? Think again. It does not. It goes directly to the servicer as some sort of a fee. And in addition to that, there are other fees that go to the servicer. Oftentimes, when you're in a modification, they'll ask to have their insurance insure your house, which turns out to be more than what you're paying. In addition to that, they have maintenance fees, they have penalties, they have additional interest, all kinds of things that add up that are tacked onto your mortgage that go directly to the servicer and not pay down your mortgage. So this is just one reason why the banks are not modifying your notes in a timely manner. Also keep in mind, what happens when you're in the trial plan payment or any modification and they give you a modification that is not a great one? Okay, let's say it's $500 more than you were really regularly paying on your mortgage. Well then, obviously your choice is to accept that modification or get foreclosed on. Truth is, no matter what your choice, you're eventually going to get foreclosed on. Because if your mortgage has just turned out to be 500 more than you were that, on something that you couldn't pay for in the first time, what makes you think you're going to be able to pay it now? So eventually you're going to reach that foreclosure point again. And when you foreclose or get foreclosed upon, then how does the bank make its money? So if they sell the house for less than what is on the mortgage, they simply apply through TARP, which is the bailout money that we gave them, or they have mortgage insurance and are made whole. So they're either made whole here, or they are made whole here. They make extra money on the trial plan payments, and they make a huge whopping amount of money on doubling their servicing fees when you go into default. So if you wonder why this process has taken so long when it's a relatively simple change of the terms of your, of your mortgage, again, to, do, to get an actual mortgage, it takes less, less than a month at times. 
But this takes years. And now you know why it takes years, because it all has to do with money. And this is my second truth. Remember, the first one is the bank is not your friend. The second one is the modification process is part and parcel of, this, of their scam. And this is an ex exact uh, illustration of why that's true. Now I think you know just why you're not getting your modification and how the banks are making an incredible amount of money by not modifying your note. So I urge you to come in, see us for a free, no time limit consultation, and I'll explain to you whether or not you are facing this very situation and whether or not there are causes of action or rights to sue that you have for your bank. Thank you. Ask Steve for free.com.